going pretty well this morning guys. I haven't seen sun like this for a little while, so it's nice. Um, I've just been writing down on here, um, like my maximum, that's the maximum from that meter. That's the maximum ever over a, lot, a couple of days ago, I think it, it basically hit this number. So we'll see if it goes any higher than that today. 1.2 kilowatts is what came in yesterday. I think it was yesterday and the end of the day before, so it's not quite true, but that gives me an idea. So 7.50 in the morning, it was um, 1.2 kilowatts. Should be kilowatt hours, and that, sh that should be watts as well. Just got the air dryer on. I really need to get a life of all this like obsessive monitoring. Obviously, the biggest thing with these meters is they basically just make you aware of what you're using, so you end up going around turning things off. So that is probably a bigger saving than actually having panels, unless you've got a huge amount of panels on your roof. It's clouded over again now, but they're definitely working much better up here. Definitely working a lot better. Yeah, it's that time again for the oil delivery. We'd completely run out. I didn't even realize it was just, literally I've never had this sort of system before, but the, the bar on the, uh, on the gauge was showing, well, Obviously it still is, it's showing like one bar, so. So I started to panic we were gonna run out, but of course we've still got electric, you can still have electric hot water, um, electric powered hot water, because there's an electric um, immersion heater in the in the tank up there, but it's just the heat inside of things. It probably wouldn't be the end of the world because I could probably just use like electric heating or something like that. But yeah, I'm surprised in this day and age there isn't like an automatic kind of reordering system that you can get, so when the tank's low, they just come and bring some more oil. For me, that'd be good because I'm, I'm just terrible with this sort of stuff. Right, that's the oil sorted out, but I mean stinks. So I've been doing some thinking, some more thinking on all this sort of stuff. Um, and right, let's just power on the, the workshop. So I've got these things here, which basically allow you to sort of turn on and off plugs, they're like smart plugs, TP link things. They're basically these things, nothing scientific, just like a remote plug. But I'm finding they're really handy for turning off things in the workshop on and off because obviously, you know, I'm not always in here, so I can kind of remotely turn things on and off. So I've got the workshop on here, I can turn on and off. That's, that's pretty much every plug socket in here, I can turn on and off um, via that. And this is connected to the inverter as well. So, you know, the shed is, is basically being powered from batteries. Um, the workshop heater, I can turn on and off. That's like set on a schedule as well. So it kind of comes on early in the morning just to take the edge off. It's only basically this 500 watt heater. But the other thing I've got here is I've got one on a thing called Powerwall charger, which is basically, right, one of my mates is just turning up. Right, where was I guys? So I was saying I've got a thing called Powerwall charger on this, um, on this remote plug. Um, now that allows me to turn on and off this, which is fairly new, I don't think I've shown you guys this, but it's basically um, a charger, it's just a straightforward charger. Um, well, it's not really, it's very cool actually. Um, I'm not gonna pull it all the way out because of the wires. Oh, yes I am, all right. So this is kind of where Victron are going with everything. Everything's basically got Bluetooth now, um, and it all communicates back to that central kind of app, the Victron Connect app, so you can actually see what's going on. I'll show you this. So let's pull it out a bit more and I'll show you. So you've got all these different modes it can run in and this can actually charge lithium ion batteries as well, which is hence why I've got it. Um, where there's very few chargers that you can just buy off the shelf that actually um, can charge lithium ion batteries. So this is this is really good. So it's marketed as a 12 volt um, charge and I think it goes up to, I don't know what the top voltage is on this actually, but it's, it's, it's higher than 12. Um, and it's a 15 amp one. So these actually go up to 30 amps. This one was actually in stock um, at Victron, so I just grabbed it really quickly. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically connected up to the BMS inside the battery, so it can charge this battery directly, and then you can remotely turn it on and off by one of these plugs. So this show you what happens. Now it doesn't show up until it's powered on. So if we power it on, it will obviously start charging. You can see the lights will start to come on on there. And once it's on, it shows up in here. So if you click on that, and when it's opened up, it shows you what it's doing. So it's saying bulk charge, so the battery at 13.92 volts, and then 15 amps going out. So it's showing you that. And it's also got this little graph thing which shows you kind of what stage of the charge process is actually on, and a little description down the bottom. And of course, like all this stuff, it can have firmware updates to you know make it do other things. Also, if you go into the settings tab, you can see um, you know the different settings. Now, actually, these are kind of presets which. I would have liked to be able to configure the exact voltage, but I don't think you really need to. Um, it's generally set up for lithium ferrite batteries, I think. But who knows, in the future they might add more. You might be able to do normal lithium ion on this. I'm not 100% sure though, it's pretty clever. And you've also got a thing called night mode as well, which basically halves the charging current and then turns the fan off. So, you know, if you've got it close to where you're sleeping, which probably, probably not. 
<laughs> I wouldn't do. Um, but yeah, if you don't want the noise, then that's a good way to do it. Actually, the fan is, is so quiet anyway. I've, I haven't actually even noticed it yet. Um, maybe on a hot day it might. So if we open up our um, monitoring thing, the, the Venus software running on the Raspberry Pi, you can see 11 amps is going in um, and it's just going to ch obviously charge this battery up. I don't know what's going on with this URL at the top, that's not, not correct at all. You can see we've taken out about 45 amp hours on there, so that's that needs to come back up again. It's because I've disconnected the solar charger, now I'm having to use this, this mains charger to actually you know, charge it once a day just to bring the batteries up. I mean, I'm not using that much power. That 45 amp hours is probably, I don't know, like three or four days worth where I haven't charged it. So. You know, it's going down very, very slowly. It's got me thinking, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to, be able to switch between my solar charger, which is currently not actually working um, because it's not connected up to the panels, and my grid tie inverter. So in order to do that, what I need to do is switch between the two um, based on state of charge of the battery. Now, there's a clever way I've been thinking that you could do this. And again, someone's mentioned in the comments about this as well, so thanks for that. You know you are. Um, use a DPDT relay, so effectively like a dual relay, to switch the panels between the grid tie inverter and the, um, the battery charger, the solar charger. And the way I can trigger that is by using state of charge on the battery meters. So when this battery meter here, which you can see the percentage here, drops to a certain level, I can have the relay in this click trigger the DPDT relay to actually turn on the solar charger rather than the grid tie. And then when the batteries are fully charged, I can then turn off the solar charger and you know put the power from the panels straight into the grid tire, then sending the excess energy back into the house. Now in order to do this I need a blooming big relay that can handle 15 amps, um, 30 plus volts, probably up to like 40 volts. Um, I need a power supply to turn the relay on and off and then to find some way of connecting it all up. I've actually found a relay on eBay which has a relay in a block with like screw terminals which is really neat. Um, I'll show you that when it turns up and then I can just connect that up. So basically it'll just do what I'm trying to do. Now the thing is with this setup, in hindsight it probably would have been better just you know, grabbing a Multi Plus, which is kind of Victron's system which does all this. It has a built-in charger, um, built-in mains charger and an inverter and you can actually connect it directly to your grid and, and do clever stuff like that. It also transfers switches between um, your mains. So really the better way to do it is probably to grab one of those. But actually I like the DIY element of here so I'm gonna see if I can get it to work this way. Um, again, I probably will try one of these um, these multi plus things. But just for the video, I thought it'd be really interesting to, to see, you know, if it was possible. Because then you're not tied to using one brand's worth of stuff. You could actually potentially do it a bit cheaper, or, or you know, there's different ways of doing it. So let's have a check to see what's happening with the uh, with the grid tie at the moment. So you've got 61 watts coming in. Not a lot. It's gone a bit cloudy. Um, so 1.8 so far. That will be. Yeah, we're already on, we were already on 1.2, so um, that's about 600 so far. It's like kind of 1 o'clock, I think, in the, in the afternoon. Um, what's that? So, yeah, 1.8 voltage, current going in. Um, so, yeah, guys, we've beaten the record today. 413 watts, um, and the highest so far was, up to this point, 377. So that's pretty crazy. I wasn't expecting to see higher than 400 watts. It's, there are only 400 watts of panels, so... I don't know if that's incorrect, but that's looking pretty good. See, the thing is with this is you, you kind of don't necessarily need to actually kind of use the solar charger because, you know, the power's coming in from the grid tire, going into the mains, and then obviously if you're using that mains power to charge the batteries, um, you know, do you really need to actually kind of flick between the two? But there's obviously inefficiencies there, but there's also inefficiencies with my solar charge controller because it's only a 20 amp um, charge controller I'm never going to see more than about 300 watts probably out of that um, out of that charge controller so yeah it's a, it's a tricky one to kind of to kind of balance because of the amount of components in the system you have to make sure that you know everything you're getting is is in is in the right kind of tolerances but because this has been one big experiment it's um it's been interesting definitely interesting Right guys, you remember I was saying it wasn't working when I was turning on and off the um, the grid tire and showing the power on the um, the meter I've got up here so I can pick up the signal easily. So look at this, 595 watts at the moment. We're not pulling a lot from the house at all. Um, and then we go in, we'll turn the grid, I'll turn the grid tire off for this experiment and I've turned the grid tire back on again. Um, so let it do its thing. Let it warm up and get up to what it should be. 
So 595 on there. There you go, down to 531. So it definitely does work. I've had a couple of comments saying, yeah, we had the same, I've got the similar kind of um, power meter um, and it doesn't work either. I think what it's to do with, it's to do with what you've actually got on in your house as well. So if you've got a lot of inductive loads, like washing machines and kind of things with motors, it affects the power factor. So basically this meter, which isn't particularly accurate, can't pick it up. When you get down to a point where there's hardly anything on in the house, give it another try and I bet it'll work. Right, right, I've just come outside. Do you remember I put the, um, the inverter in here and I wasn't gonna show you, I didn't show you because I think it was it was wet. This is basically my kind of temporary bodge job where I've just shoved the inverter in there. Um, it's warm, it's not hot. I mean, there's no ventilation really in here um, because it's waterproof obviously, but I mean, this is warm. I've seen it kick out about 400 watts. So, you know, it's definitely doing doing some work today, um, but it's not it's not too hot. But in the summer, this is probably going to be too much. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to reinstall this. Ideally, you'd put it on with the roof with the panels. I don't trust its waterproofness, really, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is actually put it on the power rack. So just basically run these wires, you know, across here, connect them up to these. It's going to be quite a bit of an extension cable going on, but we'll see what actually happens because ultimately with the switching system i want to i want to have it all coming into here into this area so the only way to do it is to have the grid tie in here um, on the rack somewhere and then i can easily switch between the panels between the um, charge controller and the uh, the grid tie what do you reckon guys right guys so this is the relay that i was talking about um so yeah you've got this nice connector block on the bottom you can just hopefully be able to just put the wires in with like maybe little ring terminals so i'm hoping that would be a good solution that i've got sweet in my mouth i'm gonna um have a rummage through this box here see if i can find the 12 volt power supply there it, there's one actually thinking about this i don't need to use a power supply do i, I could yet to use maybe like the load output um or anything really coming from the battery. I suppose the advantages of using a power supply to trigger the relay would be that if the um, the main grid went down, so if you've got this plugged into the, the main grid, if that went down, then your relay would trigger off. And if you set the relay the right way around, then basically it would mean that it would automatically send the PV power to the solar charge controller and not the grid tire. So you'd have like a double fail safe. Anyway, I don't know when that relay is gonna turn up, so. We'll have to see. Ooh, what's this? I reckon that might be Sarah's new camera. Shall I open it? How mad would she be if I opened it? Yeah, she's gone and ordered one of those new um, Canon M50 cameras, which looks pretty amazing, actually. It's basically similar to this Sony, um, it's mirrorless. She wanted like a small camera that could basically do everything. So like, you know, take pictures for a blog and also, you know, do the, do the vlogs as well. So I think things are slowly going away from kind of lugging around this massive like DSLR. Um, the mirrorless stuff is just really, really small. I couldn't help myself guys, I couldn't help myself. Nice. I know you're thinking Sarah's gonna kill me, but she just texted me and said, open it, open it. But I've got a feeling she doesn't mean open the actual camera itself. Okay, okay, I just can't help it. Are you mad that I opened it? Don't try. All right, a bit later now, just had some dinner. So I'm just gonna show you what the, uh, the latest on this is. I haven't had a look yet. Two kilowatts in total. So obviously not all of that is today because we were 1.2 this morning. Um, so 800 watt hours. Doesn't sound like an awful lot, it was because it was quite a bright day as well. But um, yeah, not even a kilowatt, so there you go. I was thinking I might just hook it up to the, um, hook the panels directly up to the charge controller tomorrow um, and then just use it to charge the batteries tomorrow and just see how much we actually get in. It's supposed to be a sunny day tomorrow. So yeah, it could be interesting to see because I've not tried that with the panels on the roof so it'd be interesting to see how much more you actually get on a good sunny day because if you look at the historics on on the charge controller um, it's been a while since i used this um, but see the highest we ever had was 1.21 but the problem is is this here 283 watts that's the maximum um, we've ever seen it never goes above that 
And the reason for that is the charge controller is limited to 20 amps because it's a 20 amp controller. So you're never really going to see much more than that, which is a bit of a pain um, because obviously we've seen clearly that with the grid tie you can get like 400 watts out of those two panels, over 400 watts out of those two panels. So yeah, it's worth thinking about that. Oh, it's a bit wet out there. All right guys, just been inside playing around with uh, Sarah's new camera. Looks nice. It looks really good. So it's the Canon M50. I'll probably try and grab it and do like a quick kind of rundown um, about it. Um, it. Looks pretty nice. It's got all the kind of features and the same sort of stuff as, as this camera, which is the um, Sony A6500. So it's mirrorless, small, um, kind of, you know, not pocket size, but you know, not a digital SLR sort of size. That's what she wanted in the middle. But it looks nice, it looks really good. So yeah, I'll probably do a rundown on that. But yeah, as I was saying, I was gonna hook up the panels directly to the, um, to the charge controller tonight um, but it's just wet and windy and rainy and horrible and dark out there outside there now so it's just pointless trying to fiddle around with wires it's pretty easy to do all i've got to do is just you know put an extension cable from uh, where the grid time inverter is and just um, plug it directly into the wires that are hanging out the shed at the moment um, and then it will just come through to that little breaker there one of the biggest things i'm missing at the moment um, is the monitoring side from the grid time inverter because I can't monitor it. There are monitoring solutions, but I can't be bothered to go and spend any more money in, on another monitoring system when I've actually got the Victron system. And I've been looking into that, um, and this is going to be another video, this is going to be something else, but I've been looking into that and you can get a meter which hooks up to the, um, the Raspberry Pi system that I've got. So you can actually monitor your grid tire input back into the grid um, and it comes out on the um, it comes up on the on the you know the control panel that I've got, um, which is running on the Raspberry Pi. So that is going to have to be done. And I'm glad I've kind of waited around and kind of dug around online and stuff like that. It's just mad how much stuff Victron have actually got. Um, it, it's like they've got every single angle covered. I've never experienced a company like it where they've just literally. You know, I'm not sponsored by them either. I haven't got it. I'd love to be sponsored by them. I just find it crazy. Whoever's behind it on the technical side, they've, they've seriously got their stuff together. Anyway, guys, enough of the rambling. That's about it for now. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.